Ed Garner is the communications director of market research company Cantar World Panel. Mitra's journal met him at the New Zealand house in London, where he discussed consumer behavior, food prices, and marketing opportunities for retailers. Obviously, the impact of the recession is, is the obvious reaction is price. But one of the things we found is that only a certain number of people are heavily interested on price. In fact, we see an evidence of two nations, and in fact, there is another group of consumers for whom price is less important shall we say, and therefore that's why we see strong growth for Waitrose and uh, Tesco uh, Finest, for instance, which are premium either retailers or products. Whilst some people have traded down to cheap carts, to mints, and traded down in meat to perhaps uh, sort of fairly basic chicken from other uh, meat proteins, obviously there are other people who are actually quite happy to make an occasion of the set piece roast, and for them the uh, price is less of an issue. I would say it's unimportant, because of course the classic example in meat, which I think we're all aware of, is the very high prices we've seen for lamb, which have actually been, have had a catastrophic effect on the market volumes and have actually caused a reduction in production as well, I believe. Yeah, there's a seasonality to lamb, which sometimes, if you're a real traditionalist, it would be associated with Easter. Uh, and I noticed that of the major retailers, uh, Sainsbury's immediately let in. They were selling a proper set piece, full leg of lamb, for the Sunday rose at really an attractive set fixed price. And that was a, a major advertised offer, and it was in store and sold very, very strongly. So those sort of approaches where both the advertising and the promotion come together because they have to work at the same time it can actually boost the sector. I mean it has to be said obviously the majority of the meat is going through the supermarkets and in particular in the case of people like Morrison's they're trying to develop this this butcher heritage. Now I know that obviously if you're an artisan butcher you can get a bit cynical about that but they do have craft training for their butchers and of course it is in, in their case a vertically integrated operation where the British meat does come from Morrison's production. Morrison's is still price driven, they're not suddenly going organic or anything like that, it's still very price driven but it's in combination with a fresh food heritage which they've been operating very successfully. I guess they're leveraging it with this slightly Disney-esque uh, market street that you go into in the stores but they are meaning to present and in fact getting quite a lot of traction with this heritage of food. Um, that's actually why people go there. They go there because of the meat count, because of the fish count. I think that meat counters are always very helpful because they can offer advice and it's obviously more attractive than just the backpack thing. But when you buy the, the joint, the butcher actually tells you and helps you. And if that can happen in the supermarket, obviously that's very good. From the point of view of the supermarket, though, in terms of increasing their trade and doing good for the meat trade as a whole, that is the sort of thing they should be doing rather than just saying, here it is, take it or leave it. Meat is not an exception. It is something that supermarkets should be thinking about as a whole. If they focus on price and make it a race to the bottom, that would be kind of the obvious answer to the economic situation. But it's counterproductive because it strips value out of the market if everybody does it. And if only one retailer does it, they reduce their market share because market share is measured in money and therefore if they unilaterally drop prices, their share goes down and therefore it's not in their interest. The premium end of the market is a way of building value back into the shopping basket. Yes, they will make cheap products available for consumer choice, but taking Tesco as the prime example, yes, to appear as a consumer friend, they'll have value products available and promotions and so on, but actually, being honest, their interest is in building up the value of the shopping basket by trading people up. Premium joints of meat can be traded up to by people trading down from eating out. Your value perception of what you're putting on the table for a family meal is quite different if it's placed in terms of competition from eating out rather than just competition from cheap stuff at another supermarket. I mean, dine-in for £10 is a classic example of that.